could we actually build time machines? In short, the answer is yes, no, maybe, in a way, and not anytime soon. Okay, this sounds dumb, but the answer to this question changes drastically based on the variables. But stick with me, because exploring this topic is actually quite interesting. Going forward in time. Let's first explore the idea of traveling into the future. In this case, the answer to the question is a solid yes, we could build a time machine to the future. How fast you want to get there, however, changes the answer to either yes or not anytime soon. Obviously, we are all right now traveling in time towards the future, because we're all embedded in the flow of time. Or we are a manifestation of time, if you consider time to be an observed change in the physical location of matter within reference frames. If nothing moved, no atoms, no energy, everything down to subatomic particles was stationary and unchanging forever, would time actually exist? I'll let you think about that as we get back to the question at hand. Let's say you wanted to travel to the future faster than your normal perception of time. This is not only possible and in line with causality, but it's something that actually happens on a day-to-day -day basis. The easiest way to travel into the future is to exploit time dilation. Time dilation is the observed difference in measured time within different frames of reference. A clock sitting on the ground and not moving will tick an incredibly small amount faster than a clock traveling at very high speeds. Or, a clock sitting on Earth will tick an incredibly small amount slower than a clock at a relative standstill in intergalactic space. This is because the passage of time as observed can be influenced by proximity to mass and relative speed. The closer you are to a high mass object, the faster time around you seems to flow from your point of view, whereas others would observe time slowing down for you from their vantage point. The same thing happens with speed. A person traveling at a fraction of the speed of light would observe time on Earth passing faster than on the ship, whereas people on Earth would observe time on the ship to have been moving slower. When I said this is something that happens day to day, this is what I was referring to. GPS satellites need to account for time dilation due to their distance from the Earth when compared to the ground-based clocks. Their speed is also an influence, but the primary cause of time dilation for GPS clocks is simply their distance from the Earth's center of mass. As a result, GPS satellites tick faster than the ground-based clocks by a few microseconds. It's small, but if not compensated for, this discrepancy adds up and the accuracy of the system would deteriorate over weeks and months until it becomes unusable. So, to travel into the future, you simply need to travel at a high percent of the speed of light for a while, or hang out near a very strong gravitational force for a while. In this way, to build a time machine to the future, you would basically be building a starship. Using photon sails or antimatter, if you can accelerate up to a significant percent the speed of light, you can travel into the future. If you travel at 90% the speed of light for 10 years, around 23 years will have passed on Earth. If you travel at 99.999% the speed of light for one year, over 200 years will have passed on Earth. Alternatively, if you could fly out to a black hole and hang out in a close orbit to it, time on Earth will seem to be traveling faster compared to you, so you could travel hundreds of years into the future in just a few hours. Of course, you would need to actually reach the black hole first and not die due to the radiation and gravitational tides, but details. So time travel into the future is possible, just horrifically impractical without radically advanced technology. But what about the other way? Going backwards in time. The answer to this one is either no or maybe. Unlike going forward in time, causality causes problems with going back. Assuming time is a single line, then going back and changing events would violate causality and render time travel to the past impossible. If time is a branching tree of divergent lines, then causality might be satisfied by simply branching the timelines in accordance with any changes. This is just a very simplistic analogy explanation. For a more concise explanation on the nature of causality, I recommend asking someone who actually has academic credentials in the subject. I'm just here to be entertaining in an educational fashion. Anyways, this is all well and good, but doesn't answer the how with regards to going backwards in time. To travel into the past, we will need to exploit something yet again, only this time it's theoretical and has not been confirmed to exist. Closed Timelight Curves A closed timelight curve is a world line that loops back to its starting point. A world line is the path an object traces in four-dimensional spacetime. Four-dimensional spacetime is the And Tesla didn't believe that electrons existed, or that the speed of light was a constant, and was very rude about it. 
Sorry, I got a little sidetracked there. Anyway, a closed timelike curve, or CTC, is something that pops up in the mathematics of general relativity and a few other things. When CTCs were discovered in the math, they didn't solve anything, and instead made things more complicated. Because a world line that can loop back on itself offers a theoretical avenue for backwards time travel, doing to causality what beach sand would do to the gearbox of a logging truck. Some ideas try to fix the possibility of time travel paradoxes, like the Novikov self-consistency principle, the concept of infinite world lines, or doing what I do and simply ignoring it. If a CTC could be exploited, a traveler could loop around the world line, ending up back where the loop started, which would be in the past relative to when they left. Alright, cool. How do we make a CTC then? Well, there are a few methods. Open your wallet, because they might be a bit pricey. Tipler Cylinder the Tipler Cylinder is a hypothetical object that was a solution to some issues in general relativity, first discovered by a couple people, namely William Jacob Van Stockham and Cornell Lankos. A scientist named Frank Tipler, after analyzing the concept, discovered that it had the capability to produce CTCs, and in a way, could be a time machine. A Tipler Cylinder would be a construct several kilometers wide and infinitely long, rotating at near the speed of light. This would create frame dragging and cause the formation of a closed timelike curve. By simply moving down a spiral path along the cylinder, you could, in theory, follow the curved world line to a point in the past. Tipler also suggested a non-infinite version might be able to do the same thing if spun fast enough. However, some, such as the late Stephen Hawking, was convinced a non-infinite Tipler cylinder would not work without negative mass. Going so far to say that closed timelike curves may prove to not be a reality at all once our understanding of physics increases. Still, for the time being, CTCs still show up in the math of a few other places, such as in frame-dragging around spinning supermassive black holes, transversible wormholes, and cosmic string interactions. One limitation to CTCs is you can only go back as far as when the CTC was first created, so if you built a machine that made a CTC, you could leave it on, but only go back as far as when the machine was first activated. So that's kinda disappointing. However, if a natural CTC exists around a black hole or a cosmic string, then that limitation wouldn't matter, as the CTC may well be over millions or even billions of years old. Much like with the black hole time machine to the future, good luck getting there. Wormholes could also be used as time machines, but like CTCs and cosmic strings, they are just oddities within math and not confirmed to actually exist. I would like to point out, however, that black holes were originally just oddities discovered in the math that turned out to be real physical objects we have seen in the galaxy. A loophole. This is all well and good, but so much of it is just hypotheticals. Can we, right now, build a machine to explore the past? Yes we can. Very easily, as a matter of fact. This may sound like a cop-out, but I'm talking about telescopes. Due to light having a finite speed, when we look at objects in space, we are looking backwards in time. The further away we look, the further back we look. In this way, we can take real pictures of what the universe actually looked like millions and billions of years in the past. The flip side to this being, we can never actually see what galaxies look like right now, as the light will take millions of years to reach us. And since light has a finite speed regardless of distance, and our brains take time to process information, in a very real way, we're all actually just living in the past. <laughs>